about a year ago when Sean first started posting videos here on Four Eyes, I got a lot of questions. Some skeptical, some supportive, but most just curious. People wondered why we were combining our channels. And I know we've touched on the reasons a few times now, and there were a multitude, but honestly, all of those would be moot if it weren't for the fact that the guy can flat out design. He's every bit the designer that I am, and unquestionably a better woodworker, and honestly, probably a better human being. From the way that he carries himself, to the way that he smells, when he grows a beard it looks better than mine. He's just a better person than I am, and frankly, I wish that I could be him. I'm not reading this. I don't know. I thought that sounded pretty good. Very accurate, too. But enough about me. Let's talk about furniture and more specifically this wooden rocking chair, which happens to be the greatest piece of furniture I've ever made. Not because it's necessarily my best design or the most complex piece I've ever made, but for another much more meaningful reason, this chair was designed, built, and named for my sister and brother-in-law's new daughter and my new niece, Cecilia, which now officially makes me an uncle. Have mercy. For the most part, all of the furniture I make has some sort of meaning that goes with it. Maybe not always for me personally, but at least for whoever I'm making it for. And every once in a while, I get to build a piece that carries with it something more than just the piece itself, and this one certainly does that. You are a sentimental man. So because this one meant so much to me, we figured it would make sense to make it into a set of forest furniture video plans and share this special chair with all of you. The plans will show you everything you need to know to build this chair, and though there isn't a chapter on how to add sentimentality to the piece, I certainly hope it will be a project that's as meaningful for you as it was for me. And you know what? Even if it isn't, we have other pieces available, and we're working on plenty more, so go check them out and see what you like. It might not be totally clear at this point, but so far I've started by building the seat, which is probably one of the more complex parts of this piece. I wanted to accomplish a few things with the design of the seat. A, I wanted it to be comfortable enough to sit in without cushions. Two, I wanted it to look just as good with or without cushions. And D, I wanted to give it the look of a contoured seat without having to do any wood bending. So I started by first making the seat side pieces, which were tapered. Then I used those as my roadmap for sizing and fitting all of the seat slats. cut and fit together, I then cut all of my joinery. I used dominoes here, but of course there are plenty of ways to accomplish this, and of course we go over the different options in the plans. With all of the joinery cut, I wanted to add a couple last small details to the seat. I wanted to add a very small chamfer between the seat slats and the seat sides to accentuate the tapered lines on the seat. And I also added a heavy chamfer on the bottom side to give the back of the seat and the top and front edges a little more visual interest. So with both the seat bottom and seat back glued up, I could then start working on cutting all of the bevels to give the seat its shape. By cutting a couple angles into the seat back, it has the look of a contoured seat and even has a very similar feel when sitting in it. 
and I wanted to have that contoured look and feel, but to be able to achieve that with a much more simplified approach, as well as being an easy place for people to customize their chair to themselves or whoever they might be making it for. So this is what I came up with. At this point, I also decided to add in a subtle curve on the top and front edge. So I marked out a curve that I thought looked good and cut it out using my bandsaw. And with that, I was ready to glue up the seat and get it into one piece so that it was actually a, well, a seat. Sometimes glue ups can be tricky and stressful, and this certainly could be one of those. But if you break it all down and have a good strategy going into it, they don't have to be as daunting as we think. So of course we included all the techniques and tips in the plans to make all of these glue ups as stress free as possible. So with the seat pretty much done, I could then get started on the legs, which will rely on some templates to get the shapes right. We're offering the option to purchase MDF templates that will be shipped to you, or if you want to take a crack at making your own, every set of digital plans will include SVG and PDF files of the templates. But however you get your templates, the first step is to lay out and mark each part so that I can start breaking down my material. Once I have all of my parts milled down to equal thick nigh, I then remark everything to get it ready for final shaping. One of the great things about working with templates is that you know your parts are going to fit and work together as long as you can reproduce the template shape onto your workpiece perfectly. And my favorite way to do this is with a router. I'll use my router, a template bit, and my actual template which is attached to my workpiece with double sided tape to start shaping each part. All right, now that my templates are attached, let's talk about this month's feature viewer project, which comes from Jaden. Jaden built this really cool skeletal desk, which is made from half inch Baltic birch plywood and half inch square steel tube. It was inspired by an old desk found in an antique shop, but Jaden gave it a modern clean look. If you wanna see more pictures and read more about this piece, go check out our website, which we'll link to in the description. We're going to be featuring a new project each month and we're happy to be using Squarespace to help us build the website. Both Chris and I have been using Squarespace to build and maintain our websites for years now. And honestly, it's one of the best choices we made when starting our businesses. At the time, I had no idea what I needed to do to build a website, but Squarespace makes it super easy to get up and running with plenty of professional looking templates to choose from, as well as making things like purchasing domains really simple. Squarespace also has plenty of e-commerce tools to help you grow your business, things like inventory management, a simple and secure checkout process, and unlimited products allow us to easily manage online transactions and not get bogged down with mundane tasks so that we can devote more time to doing the things we enjoy, like making a new rocking chair or a skeletal desk. So if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you already have one, go check out Squarespace to see if it might be a better option for you. Head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right. Thanks Squarespace. And if you want to have one of your projects featured, check out the link in the description for more details. Using a router will give us an exact replica of the template. And with a project like this rocking chair, it's really a critical part of completing the piece. So with the majority of each leg part shaped, I can cut all the joint faces on the table saw. This is a pretty simple process of just setting up table saw sleds for each joint face and using strategically placed stops to get repeatable cuts. There are a few different sled setups to complete all the parts, so we included detailed drawings and explanations for each sled setup in the plans. With all of the joint faces cut, I can then cut in some dominoes before gluing up the leg assemblies. 
and from there I could get ready to glue up the leg assemblies, which was actually a pretty easy glue up, and it really is a great feeling to see the shape of the legs come together as one piece. Alright, at this point I have the seat and legs pretty much finished, so the last thing to do is make the stretchers, which are really the final piece of the puzzle to bring the whole thing together. These are simple parts, but can be customized for whatever look you want, and can be a nice place for some subtle details. Finally, with those finished, I was able to start assembling the entire chair, and this is where I can determine exactly how I want the chair to sit. So, like I said at the beginning of this video, sometimes we get to make things that mean more to us than just being a piece of furniture that we built. And this rocking chair might be... No, it definitely is the most meaningful piece of furniture I've ever built. Which is why we decided to use it as one of our first sets of full-length video plans to offer everyone. And the hope is that you're able to get as much joy out of making this piece of furniture as I did. And knowing that we have had a small part in helping someone experience that, really means a lot to us. So thanks in advance. We can't wait to keep adding new pieces and seeing what everyone comes up with. And of course, until next time, I'll leave you with this. While I'm very proud that I built a rocking chair like this, the truth is, it's just not as good as the Savato dresser built by Chris. And also his beard is better than mine was, and my shoes suck. Wait, what?